Scholars often criticize Mark for his poor knowledge of the geography of Palestine in 731. According to this verse, Jesus returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee, in the region of the Decapolis. Jesus goes north to travel south. That seems weird. In his commentary on Mark, critic Hugh Anderson says that Jesus' course would be like traveling from Cornwall to London by way of Manchester, leaving Tyre to go north, then southeast, then back east again, to reach the final destination. On the map here, locate Tyre, run your finger north to Sidon, then let it wander to the right and downwards till it reaches Decapolis, then zero up to the Lake of Galilee. That is the route that the Gospel of Mark says Jesus took in order to get from Tyre to the Sea of Galilee. Biblical critic Frederick H. Grant concludes from 731 that the author of Mark's Gospel was certainly unfamiliar with the geography and topography of northern Palestine. However, we think that the critics are jumping to conclusions here. For example, looking at the context, Mark demonstrates his geographical awareness throughout his Gospel. For example, just check out Mark 7 24 to 26. And from there, he arose and went away to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And he entered a house, and did not want anyone to know. Yet he could not be hidden. But immediately, a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit, heard of him and came and fell down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile, a Syrophoenician by birth, and she begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. So Mark knows where Tyre, Syria and Phoenicia, the Sea of Galilee, and where Decapolis were. Are we really going to assume he didn't know where Sidon is? I have to say, that's an uncharitable reading. Also, it is entirely possible that Jesus had some reason for going to Sidon before heading down to the Sea of Galilee. The narrative simply doesn't give us enough information to know for sure. Jesus had been traveling around the region, and Sidon may have been a planned part of his circuit. To automatically presume that the author made an error strikes me as bias in the extreme. Biblical scholar Tim McGrew adds yet another piece of information. He reminds us that there is a mountain called Mount Maron standing nearly 4,000 feet high directly between Tyre and the Sea of Galilee. According to McGrew, it would have been easier for Jesus to go a bit out of his way to avoid climbing Mount Maron and to remain close to fresh water for the journey. There were no convenience stores for food, snacks, hot and cold beverages such as 7-Elevens they could stop at on the way. Hence, Jesus' travel path in Mark chapter 7 verse 31 shows Jesus' awareness of the geography of the region. Perhaps, Jesus might have wanted to avoid Mount Maron and to remain close to fresh water. The author of the Gospel avoided this crucial information, thinking that his intended readers would understand Jesus' reasons because of their familiarity with the region. However, modern readers like us who live thousands of years after the event need scholars like McGrew to explain the realities. Hence, what we read in Mark chapter 7 verse 31 is not a blunder. It does not show Mark's poor geographical familiarity. Instead, it shows possible travel preferences in first century while traveling through mountainous regions.